from BBC R&D, please welcome Ian Forrester and Rebecca Saul. Oh, we've got a clicker. <laughs> All, slides. <laughs> All slides. All slides. <laughs> ah, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Now we just do slides. Do a little dance. Hey, okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, just a little introduction of who we are. Uh, we're going to talk about adaptive podcasting and a little bit of a journey, how we got there and, and what we've done. Um, so I'm Ian Forrester, I'm the senior Firestarter. And uh, I'm Rebecca Saw, I'm a freelance developer who's been working with BBC R&D on this project. Okay. So podcasting, how many people actually listen to podcasts? Hands up. Oh, that's pretty much almost everyone. That's good, it's really good. I did this for quite a while and like, it's kind of the, the numbers are going higher and higher, so that's fantastic. But most people know podcasting through Stuff like the, um, the Apple uh, Podcast Store and the Google stuff and Spotify. Um, podcast is much bigger than that. It's been around much longer than that. And there's a real rich history, which is worth looking into if you don't already know. Um, but podcasting's pretty much been the same. It's kind of like, let's take some audio and let's put it in a form that you can download and put it onto your phone. And we want to change that. You know? We think that media has much more potential. And as we just mentioned, so as we just mentioned, um, we've been very interested in R&D around this thing called object-based media, or we're now calling it flexible media. Um, you don't need to follow this all through, but basically the top is how we do media. We kind of like take all the assets, put it together, um, and then f I call it flatten it, and then just deliver it. And that, that comes with some advantages, but also comes with some disadvantages when you're talking about multiple types of devices. And so, with object-based media, which is this other um, way we're doing it, we're basically delivering the objects um, in, in the actual file so that what happens is that the device goes, oh, actually, I know what to do with this object. I can do this with this object. I can do that with this object. And then it does a lot more than just a flattened file. If you want to know much more about object-based media, you know, talk to any of the BBC R&D engineers. We could tell you so much more. But one of the things that we did is that, one of the things I did in particular was um, we, I felt that the potential of this, because they were very interested in the object-based media from the production point of view, but I felt that there was a lot more potential around object-based media when it came to the user experience. And so we built this radio in 2013. It feels so long ago now. Um, and, you know, the same year that uh, Alexa uh, launched and stuff like that. But this radio, it's a physical radio, it's probably about that big. You can actually see it in the uh, Manchester uh, International, uh, International, Manchester, um, I call it Mosey, but the Museum of Science and Industry, that's it. Um, and it's basically a radio about that big, and it has sensors on it. So the sensor has a sensor on the front, which tells how close you are. It has a light sensor, and it has a microphone. And so with object-based media, you can do all types of different things with it. Um, more things than you could do with a flattened file. But ultimately, BBC R&D was not interested in making you know, thousands and thousands of millions of these radios. What we were doing, we were doing research on this stuff. And ultimately, it's just a computer in a box. It was, you know, it was a very nice box, very pretty box. Um, people love it, but actually it's just a computer. And I kind of feel whenever I see this picture, it kind of makes me a little bit upset because it's, it's kind of a really nice device and then you see the innards of it. We built a second radio as well with Lancaster and a few other uh, partners, um, which was much more like a computer in a box. And it had a lot more sensors. But there was like, it, we, we kind of wanted to do the research, but we kind of got to a point where what, what else, you know, if we just make more and more computers and boxes, it doesn't feel right. The smartphone revolution really caught on. So in 2016, the average sensors on your smartphone was probably about um, 11, 10, and then now the average smartphone has about 16 different sensors on it. And then also there's a lot more um, that comes with it, which I'll show in a minute. Um, but ultimately we've all got uh, smartphones, you know, pretty much. And they're kind of, they're everywhere. And so it became clear that maybe what we should do 
is we can reinvent podcasting, but using an app. So basically, we boiled the perceptive radio down into an app. Um, and we're using the smartphone sensors and data to do a lot more, which is what the radio was doing. The difference is, the big difference that happened is that in podcasting world, is that we used to, you know, remember these things, iPods and MP3 players? You know, we used to download, we used to sync them, download the file to your computer, sync them to the device, and then listen to it on the, on the go. And then we started using, you know, in the middle, started using uh, smartphones to actually download and sync. And now we're doing stuff like just streaming st stuff straight to the smartphone. So we're not even doing any syncing at all. And, but it's kind of weird because ultimately this smartphone, the computational power has increased massively and the amount of data that's available and the sensors that are available are massively uh, increased, but we're still doing audio just playback. It seems like we could do a lot more. This is the kind of computational power, data and sensors that are available to a smartphone. You know? And you could just imagine, you know, maybe your mind might wander and go, oh, I can make a, a play where maybe it uses the time of day or uses the weather or location, those kind of things. You know, these kind of data points can be used for, for storytelling, for, for other opportunities. And this is the kind of thing we're really interested in. What things will people do with this? The key thing also for us is that this needed to be secure. It needs to be privacy preserving and decentralized from the start. We made it that way. There was no way it was going to start to when you download the app, it does not send anything back to the BBC. All we know is that you downloaded the podcast because you pulled it from our server. Nothing else happens. You know, we know nothing. It's really important because it can become very easy to tr track users and do things like that. It doesn't fit with the way that we uh, in the BBC have been moving forward with a lot of the technology that we're, we're involved in. So we made it for decentralization from the start. And there are challenges with that, as, you know, as you'll find out. Um, we also made it so it was implicit. So we were not, you know, you're not pulling your phone out and go, right, I need to make a choice. It's very much, because we found that a lot of people were listening to podcasts and they were um, able to just kind of like listen and it just happens. They didn't want to pull their phone out and go, oh, I need to make a choice now, I need to do something. Um, we're not doing that. You can do that at some other point, but we're not doing that. So let's talk about podcasts. You know, what kind of things could we do? So we've got a few examples. So we've got a Mindcast, uh, which is really, really good. It's quite long. Um, and it changes based on the time of day and, and what, what you're doing. Um, we also have this thing called um, Is Santa Here Yet? Which is a podcast. It's the exact same podcast. And depending on which time of the year you play it, it will change. So if you play it now, it will be a little bit it'll be like, oh, Santa's almost here, you know, be a good, be a good child, you know, um, he's coming, he's coming. And then when you listen to it just before Christmas, then you'll hear, you know, he's like, they're just they're floating around, you know, that kind of stuff. And this is the kind of thing you can do. It's the exact same podcast. And I'll see in January, it'll say, I uh, hope you've been really good. I hope you enjoyed the presents, blah, 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 you know. Um, and there's lots of examples like that we could do. But ultimately, we built a reference specification and implementation. That's what we're doing. We're not trying to build this kind of complete ecosystem. We're just trying to change the podcast market. Um, so this is how the Adaptive Podcasting app looks right now. And it's available on the Google Play Store. And for all you people who are like, why is it not on Apple? Uh, well, I tell you, because we are trying to aim it at young people. We want young people to be able to create their own media. And young people tend to have Android phones, not iPhones. So it's really important for us. There's no reason why it can't be on iPhone. It's just that we've chosen to build it for Androids to start with. So I'm going to pass to Rebecca to talk about building the app. Thank you very much. So. How does all of this work? Well, your normal podcasting app that you have on your phone that you listen to your podcasts with will download the audio of that podcast, but it will also download maybe an image for that podcast or the credits or maybe a little bit of a blurb. And that all comes in a package. With our app, it downloads all of that, but it also downloads an instruction file. 
And this instruction file says, if it's the morning, play audio A. If it's the evening, play audio B. So that, once your app has downloaded it, it makes the decisions on your phone. It doesn't go back to a server, it doesn't do anything else. You download it once, and then you can go somewhere with no Wi-Fi, and it will play it according to the situation you're in in that moment. So we've got lots of sensors that we can take data from, that we can change our podcasts based on where the listeners are, what they're doing. Um, these are some of the ones we've got at the moment. So we can look at their name, if they've got a name um, inputted into their phone. Um, you could make a drama where the main character is running and the uh, resilience, the, the amount of running they have left in them, it depends on the listener's battery, things like that. So you can write these podcasts that directly change and adapt to what your listener is doing. And as Ian said, there's no pop-up, is it morning or night? It just takes this data automatically from the phone and doesn't track it, it never leaves your phone. And um, so Ian talked about some examples earlier, um, but one I think is really useful for just being great without having to think about it is a medica uh, meditation podcast even. So if you're like, oh, well, I want some uh, to do med meditation, if you do that in the morning, it might have some energetic background music. And if you're doing it before bedtime, it might have some more relaxing background music. So if you're a podcast producer and you're going, great, I've got loads of ideas from all these sensors. I want to make an adaptive podcast. What might that look like? Well, if you're in a recording booth for your very well-funded radio drama and you've got Hugh Grant in there, you might say, right, Hugh, what I want you to do is in the middle of this monologue, we're going to change this line. So I need you to do four different recordings. The first one, I want you to say something about spring. Spring is in the air. The second, something about the sun, maybe for summer. And the third for autumn, the fourth for winter. So you record those different lines. And then you tell the instructions to play this one if it's spring, this one if it's summer, etc. So the app takes care of that for you. So that's what it looks like from a, um, a producer point of view, sort of deciding what's going to change. So how does this work on the app? Everything is downloaded um, to the phone. Um, and the instructions, that bit of tech, that bit of code that says, if it's summer, play this audio. If it's not, play this. It's called Smile, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, the device checks its current data sensors, so it goes, what season is it? Is it spring? Is it winter? Am I in a light room? Am I in a dark room? Um, and picks what it's going to play. So the time is 8 p.m., so it will load the evening music. The podcast is then put together and played out to the listener. So these instructions are called SMILE. And SMILE stands for Synchronized Multimedia Integration Language. Um, SMILE is really great. Basically, it means we can have audio, we can have pauses, we can have text-to-speech, and we can sort of arrange them like Lego bricks. We can say, I want this one here, I only want this one if it's after 10 p.m., all of this arranging. So it's a fantastic language for a project like this. However, if you are not a coder, and to be honest, sometimes if you are a coder, this is really fiddly and annoying to try and write an adaptive podcast in. If you miss one of those brackets, everything breaks. So what I started doing after I'd been working on this project for a little while um, is starting making an editor. So this would be a drag and drop editor that would convert people's adaptive podcasts into the smile code for the app to read. Um, so I started working on this on my own and eventually I persuaded the BBC to pay me. <laughs> we were always going to pay <laughs> I <laughs> emailed Ian a lot of times. <laughs> Um, I just kept sending him updated versions of it going, oh, this is pretty, isn't it? Um, yeah, so this is the web editor. It opens on your browser. No installing, no downloading, no command line, none of that nonsense. It's super easy. Um, you drag and drop the elements. You say, if it's raining, or not if it's raining, if, it's, if the phone is in someone's pocket, play this background music. If it's not, play this. If they've got headphones on, go down this narrative path. So you can do so much with this editor. Um, it then downloads all of that, converts into that smile code, puts everything into a zip file ready to go into the app, puts the audio, the manifest, any images, 
um, all into a zip file to, that can go on the app and be listened to. Um, this web editor, it's all JavaScript, basically. There's, there's nothing in it apart from HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, Smile is an XML language, so if you know web dev at all, it's like HTML. So it's just manipulating elements and sticking them in places. If you want to know more about the code of the editor and how it's built, come find me. I will talk about it for days. Um, so yeah, it should be a low barrier to entry to making these really cool new adaptive podcasts. <laughs> I don't know how the live demo, can we do a live demo? Let's We're going to see. Let's do a live demo just on the, on the phone. Okay, sure. So the idea was I was going to show you building it in the, um, in the web editor and how easy it is and drag and drop, um, but I think technology is against us today. So that's what it looks like. That's the drag and drop. Um, you click and sort of drag things around. You say, if it's dark, do this. So, but I have got one that I made earlier. So what I've done, you've got to imagine I've shown you all of this on here, um, is I've said, uh, I'm making an audio drama and someone has just walked into a room. Um, and if it's light, I just want them to say some dialogue. If it's dark, I want them to say some dialogue and then have some spooky music afterwards. So I'm going to play the same podcast twice. We're going to play it first with the lights on and then with the lights off. And we're going to keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> so let's see how we go. OK, hopefully this works. So this is with the lights on. Where are the extras right here? So this is our very expressive, emotive actor um, your phone's voice to text, uh, text voice even. So I'll just play that against once more. Where are the extras right here? Okay, so if we could turn the lights off, please. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you very much. And I'm going to play the same podcast. Where are the extras black in here? <laughs> 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 Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad that worked. Me too. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, so the, I've got to say that I've created some absolutely crazy, um, you know, different types of podcasts, like really big, long sequences with it. So it is really powerful. And to be able to do it all on your own machine is, is quite powerful. I did it on a train, for example. Okay, so yeah, if you want to know more, We've got a whole GitHub um, of, documentation, of documentation about it. Um, the app is already available, uh, which is, oh, I'll go back a minute, um, which, is, which I showed you before. Um, just look for uh, adaptive podcasting or perceptive podcasting, and you'll find it on the Google Play Store. Um, the editor is on Makerbox as well. Um, I was so, about to say that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes, and the, the, um, the editor is on Makerbox, which is bbc.co.uk slash Makerbox, and you can sign up and you can then play with it to your heart's content. And you can do commercial stuff with it because it's, it's completely on your machine. You know, you're not uploading anything to the BBC. So the future of adaptive podcasting is open source. In September next year, we're going to open source the whole lot. So if you want to make podcasts which are, I don't know, tracking users or <laughs> look at their heart rate, you know, we don't recommend it. We don't think it's a good idea. But there's nothing stopping you from doing it because it's open source. So we're looking that people will probably implement a lot of this stuff into existing players. So you can use it for commercial purposes. You can use it for all types of purposes. Obviously. We would have also loads and loads of other podcasts that you can learn from and, and you should be part of our community to learn what people are doing with it right now. And I think that is it. Thank you. Any questions? Wow. <laughs> I think we all get that. Any, could we use this? I, I appreciate the practical and the cultural implication, but for live. Ooh. It's the most important um, podcast. I was talking to someone who's in the room, but I'm not going to say, about how we could, you could probably, because you know what time of day, so it wouldn't, so for example, you couldn't start it until a certain time. Um, you could do stuff like that. I think, especially when we open source it, the ability to pull in live streams at the same time is perfectly possible. So... We're not doing anything with it, but this is what we would like other people to play around with and show us what they're doing with it. 
Great stuff. First question. <laughs> uh, Jason Allen. Um, how do you envisage convincing users that it is actually downloaded onto their device and that it is private? Yeah, that's a, that's a really difficult one. Um, so, the, so one of the things that we've done is that we've tried to be very clear and very explicit from the beginning that this is, you know, it's not doing this, it's not doing that. Um, we've, because we've architected it a certain way, but then how do you actually say to, look, trust us, and right now there's an element of trust us. Um, we will hopefully see people auditing it and playing around with it and doing stuff with it, and then they'll be able to go, look, actually, the thing's actually not doing what you think it's doing. You know, it is doing all this stuff completely on the device. So it's not a very good answer, but we, 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 yeah, it's a really difficult one. I think, I think the auditing side of things is probably where yeah, it is. Yeah, definitely. Useful point. Second question comes from over there. If we can just throw that behind you, it'd be great. Thank you. Hi, uh, I really like the idea. I think it's amazing. Um, with, so with the examples you showed, you had different um, paths and then single pieces of audio. Is it possible to upload maybe like buckets of audio or playlists of audio into those sections to have maybe it be almost like generative, so like, you know, uh, different outcomes each time you listen, but in different circumstances? Um, kind of. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I mean, the thing I'll say is that the smile is... You probably don't want to do it in the editor, but you could probably do a whole bunch of really interesting things with a smile because it's just it's just kind of like XML. So you could probably push some stuff in there or call another service, which will do the generic the generative stuff if you wanted to. Yeah. But on a, on a small scale level, you could have like a stack of audio that you'd have to input individually at the moment with the editor because mm -hmm. the editor is for people who maybe don't code and just want something that's drag and drop. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. But you could do it. And one more final quick question right at the back. Thank you. I've got to say, it's also, it plays binaural audio back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hello, I'm Matt Gray. Um, does the smile allow people to do multiple choice or any kind of user input? So then you could do a choose your own adventure kind of thing as well as sensory data. The actual code of smile does. Yeah. But with our app, it's all non-user input is non-pop-up, but the actual coding language, yes. Yeah, that's always, we always get that kind of like, can I just ask a question or, yeah, Smile will do that easily, but we just, because of the research we've done, you know, most people, um, was it over 70% listen to on their phones and they tend to be doing something else at the same time. Um, they're not looking at their phone, looking at the app. You know, they want to do, talk to their mates or something like that. The idea is that it's effortless. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. Very impressive. Rebecca, Ian, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.